Let's begin today over in 2 Timothy. We're in the third chapter. Stay with me here. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Here they are. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Today we're going to be talking about Drew Brees, an end times coward who just absolutely blew a very incredible way in which he could have represented the one true God on an absolutely gigantic public display. A couple of these things, the reason I wanted to read this verse is because many of these attributes apply to Drew Brees, as we're going to find out as we watch what he did. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, um, and in my opinion, we're going to turn away from Drew Brees today because it's it's absolutely horrifying what he did. Let's take a look. Hey guys, Drew Brees here. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5-7, for we live by faith, not by sight. So I want to encourage you to live out your faith on Bring Your Bible to School Day and share God's love with friends. You're not alone. That's pretty cool. When I first saw this video, I was like, all right, Drew, way to go absolutely wonderful here's a nfl quarterback uh, by the way who has a net worth of over a hundred million dollars but here he is taking some time to uh, teach the youngsters to bring their bibles to school and to own their faith i thought wow can't really get better than that right boy was i wrong now for those of you that are sleeping under a rock it's no secret that the LGBTQ is absolutely taking over the world. To sit back and watch both celebrities, sports stars, and everybody in between just absolutely cave to this horrifying satanic group, the LGBTQ, is really quite something. And most of the time you can see that they do it in order almost exclusively to protect their own careers. That's one of the uh, uh, contentions here with Drew. I, I think Drew's doing is to save face to protect his career like i said he's got a huge income and he's feeling the pressure and unfortunately as you'll see today he's absolutely caving uh at the los angeles times here's the article uh we're going to read a little bit through it new orleans saints quarterback drew Brees responded thursday to the backlash and yes it is quite a backlash that he's received over a video he shot promoting a christian event organized by, or, i'm sorry organized by a group considered by many to be anti-LGBTQ. I'll jump to the chase here. The name of the group is Focus on the Family. Drew says he doesn't have any affiliation with it, and that's fine. But they're uh, promoting also Bring Your Bible to School Day. And so uh, because of the cruelty and the Satanism of LGBTQ, they automatically wanted to, and I, and I would argue knowingly, link up um, Drew Brees with this group. Why? Well, because Drew Brees came out and said he was a Christian and LGBTQ hates Christ. So they're gonna naturally attack him. The saddest thing is, did Drew Brees not expect this type of thing to happen? He almost seems a little taken back by this, uh, but either way, it doesn't matter because he's proven himself to be an absolute fraud. Big Easy is the name of a magazine that did uh, publish an article on Drew Brees. Here's the title, Drew Brees records a video for anti-LGBT uh, religious organization. Uh-oh, what's that all about? Now, uh, Drew very publicly is feeling the LGBT foot on his neck, and he decided to come out and respond to this, and let's give a listen to how he responded. Hello, everyone. There's been a lot of negativity spread about me in the LGBTQ community. My first thing was when I heard this is, who cares? Who cares if there's negativity being spread in the LGBTQ community? But because he lives in the world and he only pretends to love Jesus, uh, he wanted to address this because it's going to affect his career. Um, recently, based upon a article that someone wrote with a very negative headline that um, I think led people to believe that somehow I was aligned with an organization that was uh, anti-LGBTQ um, and, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, and so on and so forth. Uh, here's what Drew doesn't really understand, even in this moment. The Bible is anti-LGBTQ. He just said he was not aligned with an, L- an anti-LGBTQ organization, meaning focus on the family. But in essence, does that mean he's also not uh, lined up with the Bible? Because actually the Bible, God Almighty, is anti-LGBTQ. And we're going to look at the verses which clearly show homosexuality is an abomination. You can't have it both ways, don't it? Um, I'd like to set the record straight. Um, I live by two very simple Christian fundamentals, and that is love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Very nice. Now, he says he lives on these two principles. Uh, That's a lie, because first of all, if he did, which, by the way, were the greatest commandments, um, then he would surely be standing uh, with God on this whole thing. Uh, We know, as it's written in Matthew 4, 4, when Jesus, contending with the devil, said, uh, we live on every word um, that God gives us. And I'm paraphrasing. Uh, on every word of God are we to live. Uh, he's just saving face here, and it's an actual tragedy because he had a great opportunity here to stand with God and call homosexuality, call homosexuality what it is, an abomination. But instead, he's dancing around like the coward that he is, um, not even realizing that he's contra- contradicting everything that he says. I think the first one is very self-explanatory. The second one, love your neighbors yourself. What does that mean to me? That means love all, respect all, and accept all. No. So love all, yes, that's fine. Respect, no. How can you have respect for somebody who intentionally defies God, uh, and even as a group like the LGBT with their middle finger up? These organizations hate God. Respect, no. No. And then finally, he said, accept all. No, if we were just to just willy nilly accept all, then why did Christ leave heaven to die for our sins? You could have just accepted everybody. And it goes even further. If we if we accept homosexuality, which is an abomination in the eyes of God, what's next? Pedophilia? Bestiality? Where does it stop? We don't accept. I'm sorry. What Bible, bro, have you been reading? absolutely lunatic standpoint you've got going on here. So that is actually how I live my life. That is what I try to do with my family, with my teammates, with uh, people in my community, with my friends, all people, no matter your race, your color, your religious preference, your uh, sexual orientation. See, again, absolutely drop dead wrong. Race and color, of course. Men, we love all men. Uh, Religious affiliation, no. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. No man cometh unto God, unto the Father, but through me. Jesus is salvation. We are to contend for the faith. This means that we do have contention with other religious organizations. It doesn't mean we want to kill them. It means that we preach the word of God and we stand in the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, And then sexual orientation? No. Again, dead wrong. Boy, did you blow this through. Absolute lunatic. I can't, I can't, I'm just fumbling my words. I get it. It's just astonishing. What Bible have you been reading? But here we are again, perilous times. You're seeing the absolute end times folly of a man who's doing nothing but saving face and protecting his income. Now, for those of you that are wondering uh, where it is in scripture where God gives you Uh, his declaration on homosexuality. Open to Leviticus chapter 18, and you can scroll down to verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Ironically enough, right below this, neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Uh, How about that? There it is. And, and, And it's almost purposeful that that's put there. God has to tell you this. Um, but it goes back to what I was saying previously about where does this stop then if we accept this? God doesn't accept this, and he's literally teaching you to not accept this. If you fear the Lord, you will heed his words. We're not done. Go to uh, same book, Leviticus, go to chapter 20, scroll down to verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. Now, 
We're under grace. This is the Old Testament. We can't put them to death. But you can certainly get an idea of what God thinks of homosexuality enough to put you to death. All right? Am I calling for death? No. Right now, all homosexuals certainly can be forgiven. Come to Christ. Confess your sins, repent, and give your life to Jesus Christ. He will certainly not only forgive you, he will heal you if you're truly seeking God. But according to Drew Brees, it's as though this doesn't exist. But we're not done there. Let's keep going. You come over to the book of Romans, chapter 1. Let's start in verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. By the way... And this, I mean, discern this, the creature here is the LGBTQ, because there are men and women bowing down to that organization. What more than God Almighty, our creator? It's absolutely true. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind and to do those things which are not convenient. Absolutely true. Thanks, Drew. You blew a very public and powerful opportunity to stand in the truth of Jesus Christ. But it's not really that surprising because we are in the end times. We are in perilous times as we watch yet again not just a star of Hollywood or music, but now a sports star who proclaimed to love God turned out to be an absolute fraud uh, who is reading somebody else's Bible, not this Bible. So here's yet another uh, public interview he did. Let's let's take a listen. I was not I was not aware of any of the the things they said about uh, them lobbying uh, uh, for you know anti-gay. Uh, any type of messaging or um, inequality or any any type of hate um, type related stuff. I was not aware of that at all. Um, and 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 again, that the video itself was just focused on National Bring Your Bible to School Day. It was not promoting any group. Certainly not promoting any group that is associated with that type of behavior. Because I know that there, are, unfortunately, there are Christian organizations out there that are. In all right, let's just say what it is that's going on here. If Drew Brees adhered to the truth of Holy Scripture and came out publicly and said, uh, you know, what the Bible says, that homosexuality is an abomination, his career would be over. And he would lose his respect in the world, standing, all the, you know, sportsmanship, you know, uh, admiration from both kids and adults, uh, his career would be over. Uh, never mind the fact that all of heaven would rejoice that a man actually stepped forward in the end times and stood with God. Uh, that's out the window. Drew Brees chose the world. And that's why he did not publicly condemn homosexuality as an abomination in the eyes of God. He chose the world. What an absolute shame. Now, does any of this sound familiar? Well, it should, because you're seeing a pattern in the end times. We read in 2 Timothy about uh, the perilous times in which we live, uh, people having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, like, like this Jezebel fraud right here. Uh, having a form of godliness, proclaims to love Jesus, uh, actually came out and said she doesn't want to even be um, labeled as a Christian singer anymore, of course, Lauren Daigle. But Lauren Daigle's version of Jesus uh, accepts homosexuals like Ellen DeGeneres. And that's why Ellen can put her on her show all day long. Uh, and I know right now a lot of you are getting upset because you, you've you cried over Lauren Daigle's songs and you proclaim that she and her music has brought her back to God, yet none of you have cracked open your Bible, not even one time and none of you spend time in your prayer closet. So that's a testimony in, it, in and of itself. But this is why it sounds so familiar. You're seeing um, very public figures like Lauren Daigle and Drew Brees uh, pretend to love Jesus, but when it comes right down to it, they deny the power thereof. 
And that's what you're seeing. So uh, I do this video to make you aware. Whom do you serve? Will you stand in the truth of Jesus Christ when your time comes? Or will you buckle like the donut Drew Brees, who quite clearly and quite publicly uh, blew his testimony? Uh, you might not agree with me, and that's fine. But in the end, he did not uphold the word of God. He worshiped the creation more than the creator. And he fell flat on his face, or I should say on his knees, before the LGBTQ and did not tell the truth according to the word of God. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say about this. Uh, for those of you that love Jesus Christ and all truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you and we'll talk to you soon.